As I'm opening the barn door from our room, I look up and there's a man trying to get into our house. A Metro homeowner fights off a man trying to break into his home. It's kind of violating. It, you feel vulnerable, especially thinking, what if I wasn't here and my wife Pat was in the room. And he's not the only one. Tonight, we have an alert for a man who police say tried to break into several homes in the same area. The rain was coming directly out of this line here. It was like a waterfall. The week's rain is over, but its impact is not. But I was like, this is awful. Like, this is horrible. And I was like screaming on the phone with my mom. And these residents may not see any kind of compensation from their landlord. We look into the protections you have. Plus, there's now a new space for victims of the Boulder King Super shooting to find peace. Good evening, and thank you for watching Denver 7 News at 6. I'm Ann Trujillo. And I'm Shannon Ogden. Glad you're with us tonight. Neighborhoods in Denver are on edge tonight after a number of attempted home break-ins by the same person. Some of these break-in attempts even happen right in the middle of the day. Denver 7's Patrick Perez is joining us live tonight. And Patrick, they're all kind of happening in the same area. Yeah, from East Colfax to Central Park, all really do appear to be in the same area. In one case, neighbors say a homeowner wrestled with that man on the living room floor while waiting for police to arrive. In another case, like you're about to hear, a homeowner even threatened him with a knife. It was a cool afternoon in Denver Tuesday, enough for Adrian Lockhart and his wife to open their windows. But little did they know, something other than cool air would try to get in. As I'm opening the barn door from our room, I look up and there's a man trying to get into our house. The man seen here running away just moments after had climbed into their backyard near 12th and Roslyn in East Colfax. He damaged and removed this window screen and then attempted to climb through the kitchen window. So my initial reaction is, to get loud, be big. We have a knife right here around the corner here in the kitchen. And I just grabbed that out of instinct and went to the door. And by the time I got outside, he had cleared the fence and went to the neighbor. Adrian and his wife would later learn that same man was suspected of breaking into a home in Central Park days prior. Neighbors there say the homeowner wrestled with him on the living room floor while waiting for police to arrive. It's kind of violating. It, you feel vulnerable, especially thinking, what if I wasn't here and my wife had, was in the room and didn't hear it? Now she's confronted with an intruder midday. Denver police say the man is connected to possibly four different burglaries. They have yet to arrest him. There's a high level of desperation, whatever the, his situation is, to, to push to do that during the day. Because of his actions, Adrian and his wife are now reconsidering whether to open their windows again on a beautiful day. I think it's going to take a little bit of time for her and I to adjust to the reality that we just have to be more aware. So Denver police is obviously still trying to track down this man. If you have any information about who he is or where he may be, give Metro Denver Crime Stoppers a call. And yeah, that is definitely unsettling. Thank you, Patrick. And let's dig a bit more into Denver police data for crime statistics in this area. Since the beginning of the year, there have been more than 1100 crime reports in the East Colfax neighborhood. The area has been identified by Denver police as a crime hotspot, meaning more police patrols have been dedicated to that neighborhood. And safety in East Colfax neighborhood has been a top priority for residents since the death of a community leader. Ma King was killed by a stray bullet as she was just unloading her car. Her family has questioned police response time, saying they were put on hold by 911 dispatchers for several minutes. We spoke to Denver's 911 director about this earlier this month, and he says his office has no evidence of response times being different in that neighborhood, but he also doesn't want to dismiss community concerns. It's incumbent upon us in public safety and for me here at 911 to review everything from our training policies to our uh, interpreter services and make sure that we are serving all communities, including the East Colfax community, to the best of our ability. And Denver police echoed that response, saying they clearly have work to do to ensure safety in that neighborhood. Exactly one month ago today, Denver police attempted to arrest a man as bars led out in downtown Denver. And in doing so, three officers fired seven shots at him, injuring six innocent bystanders in the process. And today, three of those people spoke to Denver 7. Now, it was yesterday the police body cam video was released showing the moments leading up to the shooting. And it shows 21 year old Jordan Waddy grabbing and tossing a gun to the ground and putting his hands in the air before being shot by police. Well, today we spoke with Bailey Alexander, Willis Small IV, 
and Yokalo Waldehewet, and all three were either shot or injured during that shooting last month. And they all agreed, despite the threat, police were wrong, they say, in firing into a crowd of people. It was extremely disappointing considering the amount of lives, especially in my age range, that were right in that crossfire. And it's very surprising that it didn't end up any worse than it was already. This specific instance I feel was just completely mishandled. I think there were a lot of other things they could have done rather than just immediately jumping to shooting. Even now, uh, just uh, to be around mass crowd, just walking on street, on the street, whatever, or see a police car from a distance, I just get the sense of anxiety. All three victims say they are still recovering physically, but the emotional toll will take longer to recover. Denver police said after the shooting that something went wrong and Denver's district attorney has opened a grand jury investigation into the shooting. Well, this week's rain certainly was welcome, but it came with a cost. People from all over the metro have been reaching out to contact Denver 7 with stories of leaking ceilings from that rain. Contact Denver 7's Bayon Wang went to see it for himself. And here goes the leak again. Heavy rain from Monday's storm. Into the fish tank. It is a 10 gallon fish tank and we empty this tank four times. It's only been a month since Barbie Ross moved her family into the lofts at Lincoln Station in Lone Tree. Now she wants out. The rain was coming directly out of this line here. It was like a waterfall. That's what it looked like from here. Ross says the leak became even worse, damaging various pieces of furniture and personal belongings. That is about to cave. When the ceiling started to bubble, Ross called 911 and South Metro Fire showed up. And that's not right. If you guys see, I mean, I think the water, the rain stopped, but if you see it start to bubble like that. Ross says she's staying in a hotel in the meantime. Spokesperson for the apartment tells Denver 7 they will pay for three days of her stay there while damage to her living room is being repaired. Ross isn't the only Denver Metro tenant in the same situation. I was on the phone with my mom and there was just water that started pouring out of my light fixture. Aaron Pulsefoot lives at the Outlook DTC apartment in the Denver Tech Center area. Monday's storm leaked into her living room by surprise. I was like, this is awful, like this is horrible. And I was like screaming on the phone with my mom and she was like, what's happening? Ross and Pulse Foot have more than just a leaking ceiling in common. They both want out of their leases following the incidents. But as attorney Brian Kuhn points out, it's complicated. If the landlord has been negligent uh, in repair or maintenance of the facility or the unit, and as a result of that uh, negligence or neglect, that leak occurred, then yes, absolutely. Uh, the tenant may have a case to get out of it. But if there was no neglect on the landlord's part, the conversation changes. Yes, the tenant could get screwed in that type of situation where, again, no fault of the landlord. This has happened uh, and someone has had to move out. Uh, one would hope through dialogue and discussion that some sort of professional accommodation could be reached. Those sort of accommodations in the Denver Metro are much more ideal than often seen. Bayon Wang, Denver 7. And if you have something you would like Contact Denver 7 to look into, don't hesitate. You can call the number on your screen or you can email contact7 at thedenverchannel.com. State health officials are building on the success of mobile COVID-19 vaccine clinics to help fight the spread of monkeypox. CDPHE has converted an old vaccine unit into one for monkeypox, and the state teamed up with the group One Colorado Today for a mobile clinic and these clinics will be held weekly. Now, the LGBTQ organization says it is also working to confront stigmas around monkey monkeypox, and one of them is to avoid actually using that term and instead calling it MPV. More than a year and a half after the Boulder King Super shooting, there's a new support system for victims and families of victims. It was spearheaded by family and friends of Lana Bartkoak, one of the 10 shooting victims. Denver 7 photojournalist Scott Blessing put together this story. surreal it was you know just the it's I'm really just really proud of how this came into fruition this is a memorial gazebo that we built just this couple weeks ago 
Um, it's in honor of the victims who were killed in the Boulder King Super shooting. The sister of one of the victims uh, reached out to us, wanted to make a donation in memory of her sister. In memory of not just Lana, but all the other victims that will serve as a healing place and a place of refuge and silence and meditation. Having these kind of memorials and these opportunities to grieve in a way that's constructive is really, really important. We planted 10 roses, one for each of the victims. Alana loved roses, we all love roses. The rose essence, the rose flower, um, has the highest vibration of any flower, energetically. So it's a way to keep the vibration high around the people who use the gazebo. It's important for me for them to be remembered, for my sister to be remembered, and them all to be remembered, and for to turn this horrible situation and try to bring some good out of it and to inspire. And this gazebo isn't open to the public, but if you're interested in visiting, call Animal Assisted Therapy Programs of Colorado to see if there's a time available. It was a beautiful day today. We have some hotter temperatures coming for tomorrow. Early childhood teachers are a hot commodity in Colorado. It's challenging work. Um, it is physically and mentally and emotionally demanding. A new group is tapping into unused potential. As we age, we tend to be sidelined and we don't deserve to be sidelined.